Well, welcome to Think Like a Champion. We are right into our 11th episode. I'm glad you've joined me. We're going to get right into the content. Are you ready? Because I want to talk to you about three things that are essential for you to walk in your God-given destiny, in the destiny that God has for you, whether it be in business, in health, in relationships, in your finances, in ministry, in any area of life, to have healthy and true success and victory in this life, there are three indispensable things that we have to get right. Now, those three things are the right people, the right place, and the right purpose. When we get those three things right, when we are connected to the right people, when we are in the right place, and when we are achieving or walking in the right purpose, there is nothing that can stop you. You are literally unstoppable. Now, remember, as we began to talk a little bit about this last week, the men of 2 Samuel chapter 23, it speaks of the mighty men of David or David's mighty men. Now, most of us would not even remember these guys' names, but it's what they're known for rather than what they're known as that distinguished these men. Listen, in their day, in the day when these guys are written about in 2 Samuel chapter 23, they were the real life equivalent of Marvel comics, Marvel movies. I'm a fan. Many of you are probably fans. But Marvel's depiction of an elite group of assassins injected with Howard Stark's super soldier serum. They were called winter soldiers and they were just they could just accomplish feats that humanly were impossible. But these guys in 2 Samuel chapter 23, they actually did achieve these great things. But let's see how super they really were, what kind of warriors they really were. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8, these are the names of David's mighty men. It says, Joshub Bashabeth. It says, he was chief of the three who raised his spear against 800 men who he killed at one time. He didn't kill 800 enemy soldiers in a lifetime, he killed 800 enemy soldiers at one time. And next to him, it says, was Eleazar, son of Dodo, who went with David when they defied the Philistines and had gathered for battle. And verse 10 says, he rose and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clung to the sword. He struck the Philistine, Philistines until his hand could not be separated. His hand was one with his sword, as it should be in our lives. Our hand should be one with our sword, the word of God. Right. And then it says and next to him. And I find that really interesting in this passage. It says talks about the first mighty man. And then it says next to him. What? And then it says and then next to him, it, each of these times that these men are mentioned, they're mentioned as people that were next to each other. We got to get next to the right people. Now, notice next to him was Shammah, son of Agi. And it says he took his stand in the midst of a plot of ground full of lentils. This guy was so committed to preserving the victory that God had given him that he fought over a bunch of beans. And it says after everyone else fled, all the other soldiers fled. This guy, Shama, he took his stand in the midst of the plot and defended it and struck down the Philistines and the Lord worked a great victory. Now, remember, as you heard Rob talk about last week and you heard myself talk about these men didn't start out as these kind of super soldier warriors because it's not where you start. It's where you end up. Let's see where they started. First Samuel 22, verse one and two. Remember, we're talking about the right people. We're talking about the right place and we're talking about the right purpose. First Samuel 22, one. So David left Gath and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. Now, the cave of Adullam has to do with the place and we'll get to that. But notice it says when his brothers and his fathers Watch this. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. And everybody that was distressed and everybody that was in debt and everybody 
that was discontented came to David and he became captain over them. I want you to see that the person, the people, the right people, David was the right people for these men. They were in debt. They were in distress. They were discontented. But they knew David was the right person. They knew that even though David was flawed, as we all are, they knew if they hung around this guy that they could get out of debt, they could get out of distress, they could get out of discontentment. In fact, verse five goes on to say, but the prophet Gad said to David, do not stay in the stronghold, go into the land of Judah. Also, we're going to get to that place because Judah is a place also. So today I want to ask you a question. Who are the people you're surrounding yourself with? What are what where is the place you're connected to and what is the purpose that you're living for? I want to encourage you. I got some answers for those three things, but I want you to realize that the Bible says that David became captain over them because whatever we don't become captain of, we become captives to. We have to conquer these things in our lives and to conquer our debt, to conquer our distress, to conquer our discontentment. We need to be connected to the right people. We need to be positioned in the right place and we need to be propelled into the right purpose. So let's talk about those three people. Number one, that's simply I'm, I, I use this phrase a lot, the power of right associations, who you surround yourself with matters. These guys came to David. They came to David, the lion slayer, and they became lion slayers themselves because you will become like the people you surround yourself with. That's why Think Like a Champion is such an important part of my life. I'm connected to you. That's why Life Changers Church is the people that I'm connected to. But I want you to see this verse in Second Samuel, chapter 23, verse 20. It talks about one of another one of David's mighty men, Benaiah. It says he killed a lion in a pit on a snowy day. Now, is there any wonder why this man was able to kill a lion? Who's the first person that we find in Scripture that kills a lion or the first one that we really know about that killed a lion and a bear and the giant? It was David. And so notice this man, Benaiah, is surrounding himself with David. These mighty men are surrounding themselves around David. And this man ends up doing what David did. David killed a lion. Benaiah killed a lion. And not only did he kill a lion, but you can also become better than and go further than I should say, not better because we're all trying to be the best version of ourselves, not better than somebody else. But you but you can go further than those that you surround yourself with. They, they might, maybe they're called to propel you and then you're called to propel them. And I think of my kids that they they surpassed me in many ways. And I'm kind of following them, chasing them in some in some ways as they've progressed in their life. But at first I was further along and they and, and they hung around me and they caught up and surpassed me in some ways. And now we're having some fun competition in, the, in that sense. We all want to be the best version of ourselves. But who you hang around, it matters more than you think, because this guy not only was he able to successfully kill a lion, but he killed a lion in a pit on a snowy day. We got to talk about this guy another time in more detail because this guy is awesome. Benaiah. OK, you need a Benaiah in your life. You are a Benaiah and you are going to do. Jesus even said the works that I do. Shall you do greater because I go to be with the father. Woo. All right. I'm already happy now from this preaching. I hope you are as well. Your friendships can actually have an impact in all areas of your life, including your finances. In fact, there was there have been studies done researching the daily habits of wealthy people for five years. There's a, a author named Thomas Corlefound that the, he studied all these successful people and they, the successful people avoided one type of person at all costs in their life. Negative people, pessimists. The study showed that the most successful people, they eliminated one kind of person from their life, negative people pessimists, pessimists, pest should be pessimists because they're a pest when you hear negativity from pessimists. We're optimists. We believe in the good and we look for the good and we expect the good. Right. 
They even studied that this guy continued to study self-made millionaires are very particular about who they associate with. He wrote in his book, Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. You're only as successful as those who you frequently associate with. That's why being in the right church, being connected to the right people is so important. One guy said, whenever I get a good idea, I incubate myself from negative thoughts, negative people immediately because I realize that you only need one negative comment to destroy a good idea. He said that it's very powerful. It's very, very powerful. You will only be as great or you have an opportunity to be as great or greater than the people you surround yourself with. So be brave. Let go of of anything or people that's keeping you down. Don't force connections with people who make you feel less than amazing. I hate to pile on the data on you, but after researching over 500, after researching over 500 self-made millionaires, Napoleon Hill wrote, men take on the nature and the habits and the power of those with whom they associate with. He wrote this in 1937. Number one, the right people. Number two, the right place. Notice where they went first. These guys that gathered to David. Notice where they went first in first Samuel when they were in debt, distressed, discontent, which we we are going to break each of those things down and get you out of debt, get you out of distress, get you out of discontentment. But I want you to see how important these three things are to deliver you from those three things. The three things are the right people, the right place and the right purpose. Now, notice the place they gathered in first Samuel 22. It says they gathered to David in a cave, in a cave, in a cave. Caves notoriously have bats. <laughs> Caves potentially have wild animals. Caves are always dark. Caves are where no one sees what's going on. But what was happening in that cave? Mighty men were being formed. Mighty warriors, because this is for men and women. Mighty warriors were being formed. You see, it's not in the open places where we're formed and shaped by God. It's in the hidden places where no one sees. It's in the hidden places where there are no good selfies to take. It's in the hidden places where you're not popular. You're in the right place because that place is helping to shape you. That cave is helping to shape you. Sometimes I felt alone in our church like it's a cave. Sometimes you might come to a church and you feel alone. You're in a cave. You know, the church is supposed to be a place with for great relationships and great community. But sometimes that church is supposed to serve as a cave where you feel that you are in a place, a hidden place, and you're gathering there and you're coming there because you want God to shape you and you want God to mature you and you want God to to car carve you into the best version of you, like Michelangelo carved David out of a piece of marble. He saw David in that marble and he just cut away at the marble to set David free. And God is cutting away at some things in your life to set you free. And I think the place is so vital. The cave is a, a powerful picture for me where no one else can see you, where it's just you and God. And place in church, we where two or three are gathered in his name. Jesus said, there I am in the midst of them. When we gather, the reason we're gathering is not just for the community of the right people around us, but we're gathering for the communion with Jesus. He, the point is where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. The whole goal is not just that with two people gathered, but it's that the people that gathered created an atmosphere and an invitation for Jesus to come in their midst. And wow, that's to me what the church is supposed to be, a place where we're developed, a place where we meet with Jesus, a place where we worship, where we are standing before an audience of one, Jesus, and we are worshiping him. See, see, you see, the cave is a place and we need to be in the right place to become the people that God intended us to be, the, to walk in our purpose and our destiny. 
Then where did they go from there? They went from the cave. And then it says in first Samuel, chapter 22, verse five, it says, but the prophet Gad said to David, do not stay in the stronghold, go into the land of Judah. So David left and went to the forest of Hereth. Go to the land of Judah. Now, Judah is the place of praise. Wow. The cave is a place of progress and process that nobody else sees. Judah is the place of praise. We are created by God to praise something, either people or ourselves or the one who's worthy of it all. Jesus praise stills the avenger praise confuses the enemy praise changes your physical and emotional health. We need to stay in a place of praise even when things go bad. Gad told him, go to Judah. Judah is the place it means praise. Wow, that this is the place, the place that is going to deliver us from debt, distress and discontentment is the cave of the church and the place of praise in the house of God and in your house, too. That's that place of praise is where we're supposed to be. That place of the cave of development and progress and process is where we're that's the right place where we get out of debt, out of distress, out of discontentment. The right people get us help get us out of debt, distress and discontentment as well. And then third, the right purpose. When we have these three things at work in our lives, we will be delivered from debt, distress and discontentment. And I'll get into that in more detail next time. But number three is purpose to walk in the right purpose. We need divine wisdom. Also in the story of David and his mighty men in first Samuel, chapter 20, chapter 23, after chapter 22, David, when David was told, look at what it says in verse one, David was told, behold, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are looting the threshing floors, it says. And then he inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, go and attack and save Keilah. Then verse four, when David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Kalia again, he said, David went to the Lord again. The Lord answered, go and attack. The purpose is to defeat your enemies that are keeping people from being saved and safe. Our purpose is to set people free. Our purpose is all about people. If you think your purpose is to own a business, it's so that that business can serve people in a better way. If you think your purpose is to be in the ministry, then that reason you're in ministry is to set people free and serve people better. If your purpose you think is to raise a family, to have a family and to, you know, to have kids, the purpose of that is to create a safe place for those kids to grow and to become the best human beings that God created them to be. You see, we always have to remember what the purpose is. And if we ask God for wisdom, he'll show us his purpose for our lives. David asked for wisdom. And I like how it says that I will give the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Kalia and fought with the Philistines and brought away their livestock and struck them with a great blow. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. Verse five says David saved the inhabitants. David saved the people. David saved the people. It's all about people, gang. God spoke to me a couple years ago during the pandemic. My people are everything to me. Tell them my people are everything to me. You are everything to God and people are everything to God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Think about that. That, wow, he cares so much about people. He's all about people. He's all about his creation becoming his children and his children becoming successful, victorious warriors for the souls of men and women, warriors for the souls of children, warriors for the souls of the innocent. Well, I just pray that you get a hold of this, that to truly walk in your purpose and destiny, to truly walk in God's will for your life. What we when we want to truly be out of the bondage of anything, the right people, the right place 
and the right purpose, the right people, us together, one on one here and in the house of God, the right place, the place, the cave, the hidden places where no one sees and the place of praise in the house of God and in your own house, in the temple and house to house. And then the purpose, the purpose is people. The purpose is always people. The purpose is not money. The purpose is not fame. The purpose is not success. The purpose is not Instagram followers. The, pr the purpose is setting people free in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, to these people, places and purpose that you have created for us, and created us to be a part of and created us to be connected to. And Lord, take us all to a place of victory that you already paid for, but a place and a level that we've never experienced before in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me on Think Like a Champion. My goal is to bring you valuable content. I'm going to do it again next time and in a short period of time. It helps you win in every way and enjoy every day. If if this brings value to you, if if you feel this really encourages you, inspires you, coaches you, then do me a favor and and subscribe to the podcast, share it, share this with someone, you know, if you post on social media, tag me so I can see it and reshare it as well. And you can also support financially, pay it forward, give in advance of what will help somebody else. If you believe in what we're doing and you want to help inspire people to move towards the right people, the right place, the right purpose then you can sow a gift of any amount to lifechangerschurch.com. Go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give and help us reach more people. Let's partner together and reach more people. Let's stay connected together and reach more people. The world of the generous gets larger and larger and you are the generous. And I know your world is going to get better than ever. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, short plug for my book, Soul Cure. Get a copy of it. Um, it's all about finding how to heal your pain and discover or find your purpose. And you will, you will find a cure to everything that ails you in Soul Cure, located in bookstores and online everywhere. Get it today. Thanks again for joining me. I can't wait to see you next week on Think Like a Champion and Sunday at Life Changers Church. God bless and God is with you. Don't forget. Mm -hmm.